Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Pionman 5 case by SunFounder. This case has been designed to house a Raspberry Pi 5 and an NVMe storage drive. It'll set you back almost $80, but it does have quite a lot to offer. So let's see how well it goes together, how the Pi and NVMe drive perform in it, and whether it's worth the money. This is the second generation of Pi and Man case, although they don't look very much alike. The previous version was made for the Pi 4, which didn't have a PCIe port. This case takes advantage of that to add an NVMe drive to the Pi without the need for an external USB jumper. They've also shifted from a two opposite clear side panel design to a wraparound clear panel design. The case comes in a fairly large white branded box, and on the inside is the aluminium shell packed full of the included fans, cooler, expansion boards and mounting hardware. Oddly, I did get a random open and empty sleeve in mine. I don't know if that means something is missing, or if it just found its way into the box, but I guess I'll find out when assembling it. You can see from the spread that there's quite a bit to this case, and like with the previous Pine Man case, it's going to take more than a couple of minutes to put together. To assemble the case, you start by adding the standoffs to one enclosure half. You then plug some of the carrier boards into the Pi, then mount the assembly into the case. You then add the power button and the cooler. They supply pads for the Wi-Fi chip and power circuitry, which is a bit different. Previously this cooler covered the RAM chips, USB and Ethernet controller. Next we install the NVMe drive. The NVMe drive carrier board supports multiple drive sizes from 2230 to 2280. I'm going to be using a Lexar 2280 drive in the case. This is not all that fast as far as an NVMe drive goes, but it does run at Gen 3 speeds, so it should get quite close to the maximum speed that the Pi can handle. We then attach the fans to the back panel, and with that done we can mount the GPIO expansion board with our OLED display. Then screw the two aluminium case halves together, and then stick the display onto the front panel. Lastly, we add the clear acrylic side panels to finish it off. Assembly is relatively easy with good step-by-step -step illustrated instructions, and the hardware is labelled well too. It took me about 30 minutes to have the case completely assembled and ready to boot up, which you can do by pressing the power button on the front of the case. To get the display and lighting to work, we need to install some additional software. This is a fairly simple GitHub install that took a few minutes and I didn't have any issues with it. The fans turn off and the OLED display comes on when the install completes, but they do still recommend a reboot. The OLED display on the front is showing the CPU usage and temperature, the computer's IP address, as well as the RAM and storage capacity. The software also has a really nice dashboard, which is accessible through the browser and allows you to see your system stats, plot graphs of the stats, see logs, and access some of the case script settings. You can also change the color of the RGB lighting and adjust its pulse mode or set it to cycle through different colors. One of their claims is superior cooling. I personally use one of these style tower coolers on my Pi 4s and 5s running in 3D printed cases. So I'll use that as a baseline to see if the additional fans and this slightly different cooler base design make any difference to the thermals. I'm also interested to see how loud it runs, as we've got three 40mm fans on the case, with the back two not being PWM fans. So they're either on at full speed or they're off. The default setting for them is to turn on when the CPU reaches 60 degrees, but this can be adjusted. I'm going to adjust them to have the back fans running at full speed for the stress test to see how it compares to my case's thermals. My case has a single 40mm PWM fan and I'll set this to 100% for the comparison as well. I'm going to be using CPU burn to apply a full load to the CPU and we'll leave that running to see at what temperature it stabilizes. I doubt we'll get anywhere near thermal throttling with this cooling setup. At the stock CPU frequency of 2.4GHz, at idle the CPU temperature started out at 25 degrees. I left the test running for just under 30 minutes, and it stabilized at 52 degrees, so we've got a delta of about 27 degrees, which is really good. This means you've got a lot of headroom for overclocking. 
The fans are not as noisy as expected, but they would be annoying if you had this on a desk next to you and they were running the whole time. Thankfully, having them only turn on at 60 degrees means that they're off most of the time, and they only come on when you're really putting a demanding load onto the pie. With the fans still on, the Pi CPU drops back down by 10 degrees in about 5 minutes. I ran the same test on my case, this time the starting temperature was just 22 degrees, so 3 degrees below the Pine Man case. The temperature reached equilibrium much faster, but I left it running for 30 minutes in any case. It stabilised at 36 degrees, so we had a delta of only 14 degrees, which is significantly better than on the Pine Man 5 case. I think this is mainly down to the airflow path. My case design has airflow straight across the cooler and out some large ventilation holes on the opposite side. The Pine Man case doesn't really have air inlet vents, and the fans at the back are each pushing air through a restrictive dust filter. So although it's got two more fans than my setup, they aren't working as effectively. To test the NVMe drive speed, I'm using James Chambers' Pi Benchmark script. This script favours random read-write performance, so is a good representation of how an OS would be using the drive. Over three consecutive tests, I get an average score of 51,963. This is a similar score to what I get if I use the Pomeroni NVMe base with the same drive on my setup. So that's a good indication that there are no issues with the drive adapter. It's quite a bit slower than the speeds I got in my recent NVMe hat comparison video, but that was done with a Sabrent rocket drive, which is much faster than this Lexar drive. Overall, I think the case looks great, and provides some nice functionality over the stock part. I particularly like the full-size HDMI ports over the stock micro HDMI ports, and the fact that all the cables run out the back of the case rather than out the back and side. There are also a few good improvements on the original design. Assembly is quite a bit easier, and it doesn't rely on the side panels to hold the metal case components in place, so you can have the side panel removed to work on the Pi without compromising on the case's structural integrity. In terms of size, it is slightly larger than my 3D printed case, measuring 112 by 117 mm and is 79 mm wide, but they've managed to cram a lot of features into the small space. It's obvious that Sunfounder have tried to make the best case that they can for a Raspberry Pi 5. It comes with quite a high price tag, but in terms of value for money, it is fairly good. You can pick this up and you don't need to worry about getting a separate cooler, an NVMe hat, fans or an OLED display, and you still have access to the Pi's core functionality like its GPIO pins. It also comes with some nice finishing touches like labels for the ports, and includes plenty of additional screws and mounting hardware, so you're covered if you lose some of those too. I never found anything missing from the case hardware, so I assume that this empty sleeve made its way into the package by accident. If I had to pick out some things to be critical about, I probably would have made the back fans PWM controlled as well, that way they'd run a bit quieter. Although already being able to turn them off most of the time in software partially helps with this. The dust filters on the back fans are also unnecessary, as these fans are exhaust fans, so you're filtering the dust out that would be leaving the case. These would be better positioned on some inlet vents, and removing them would improve airflow through the exhaust vents. Let me know what you think of the Pine Man 5 case in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials, and reviews.